Hello everybody and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. In this video we are going to get to the fun stuff which is trusses. Now before we begin I just want to say that I hope you guys are all doing well, hope you guys are happy. Alright so with that being said let's jump into trusses. Now trusses are very simple and that's what makes them a very common design situation for things that you don't want to look pretty. For instance if you guys look at a lot of the telephone poles, the really really big ones, they're usually a collection of trusses. And same thing with old railway bridges. Now, typically when I say trusses, you guys think of these old railway bridges that we used to have. So this is actually the bridge here in Edmonton. And behind the bridge in real life now today, well, not real life, because this, <laughs> this is, of course, real life, but modern day, uh, the university is actually behind this bridge. So if you guys are at the University of Alberta, chances are you guys have now seen this bridge. It's been retrofitted, so that is now, of course, a road rather than a railway track. But again, it's nice to see these old bridges really stand out. Now, these bridges as trusses are actually a collection of two things, members and joints. So if I were to kind of draw this in two dimensions and I have a truss, each truss consists of two things. So we're going to have members, and these are the long, slender pieces that go between what we call the joints. So we have members and we have joints. Now, in this particular picture here, the truss members would be those long pieces of steel and the joints would be those rivet connections where all the steel pieces kind of connect. Now trusses can actually be classified as two different things. The first one is a plane truss or a two-dimensional truss where all the members act in the same plane. The best example is actually the truss above and the truss that I kind of drew using the PowerPoint clip art. Because if we look here, the truss is actually just two members that are side by side and the railroad is in between. But those two members all act in the same plane, those two trusses. Now, the second kind of truss is something what we call a space truss. And these are basically 3D trusses where the members act in multiple planes. So for those of you guys that like to go to parties, go to raves, you guys usually seen the stage set up with these kind of trusses. So there's an example over there. So that's a three-dimensional truss. These ones get a little bit more complex to analyze, but good thing for us in this course, we are going to be focused on the first type, which are plane trusses. So nice 2D trusses. All the questions you guys will receive will look something like the one on the top right, something like that, nice and easy. Now, when we solve truss systems, we are actually interested in two things. So that's gonna be the goal of these next couple videos, determining two things in trusses. The first is the axial force, so this would be the magnitude. Is it 100 kilonewtons? Is it 200 kilonewtons? Or if you're American, is it 100 pounds or 200 pounds? And then the second thing, of course, is whether the force acts in tension or it acts in compression. So that's going to be important. Again, we want the magnitude. And if that magnitude is in tension or is it in compression? Because if we're designing for tension, it's actually going to be different than if we design for compression. Makes sense? Now, we go into the analysis of trusses we have to actually do some kind of groundwork before we get into the actual fun. When we talk about the analysis of trusses, there's going to be two methods and they're going to be discussed in the next two videos. That's the method of joints and the method of sections. Now, before we get into those, we actually have to state two assumptions that we're going to make. So both of these analysis methods that we discussed are going to rely on these two assumptions for simplicity. The first one is that all external loads act at the joints. All right, so if I have my nice truss structure like this and it has some loads, well, we can see that two of these loads at the very top act at a joint, so these are considered valid. However, if we look at the load on the left, it does not act at a joint, so we actually would not consider this case. So there's the first one. All the loads that we deal with in this course, they always act at the joints of the truss, and as we're going to see, this is actually a very valid assumption. The second one is that all joints act as pin connections. And you guys think, Clayton, what exactly does this mean? Well, if I take my truss and I were to analyze one of these joints, as we can see, the joint basically acts as a dot and all the forces intersect at that dot. Now, if we remember, this is actually a case of particle equilibrium. So the kind of the key thing here is this joint provides no moment resistance, or if we were to look at our free body diagram, there's no moments, all right? So this is basically particle equilibrium with no moments. And now you guys are kind of thinking, ah, that's why we learned particle equilibrium. I know a lot of you guys, when I teach it, you guys kind of say, ah, this isn't really useful because 
Uh, realistically, we have moments, but we can actually design to make sure that there are no moments. And when we actually do trust design in reality, we as engineers have to make sure that there is no moments on our trust. So the question becomes, all right, these are two assumptions and I hate assumptions because they're not realistic. Well, it turns out that these two assumptions in reality are actually pretty true. So if we were to look at the first assumption where all our external loads act at the joints, as engineers, we actually design our truss bridges for this to be true. So remember that for a truss bridge, it's basically two planar trusses running parallel to each other and the railroad or the bridge acts in between. Now this bridge or the railroad that acts in between on that nice flat plate, it is actually supported by beams underneath. And these beams, which I've now shown in green, we only connect them to the joints of our truss. You never see one of these beams connected to the middle of a member. So this, as engineers, we actually can make sure that this first assumption holds true. Now the second one is that the truss joints are designed to be concurrent. And this again is something as engineers, we get a pick. So if we were to go look at any bridge that we want to, so here's the one here in Edmonton, we can see that uh, yes, our joints are designed to be concurrent because if I were to draw some lines, they always intersect at that same point. So again, these are two assumptions we make, but as engineers, we can ensure that these assumptions actually hold true. So it's actually kind of cool. And that's the fun of design as engineers, we can start to control things. So yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.